Hello everyone, welcome back to the Shonky Lab. I'm Elton and this time is a change of schedule schedule or schedule. What what is the American and what is the English one? Schedule. Schedule. Change Not... to our schedule. How about how about a change of plan? Change of schedule. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have Mr. Lee Metcalf. Hello. You and nearly said Harvey, didn't you? I nearly did, yeah. <laughs> That's that's okay because I I often I often say to say Elton and then I go to say Andy instead. It's because we're interchangeable. Everyone knows that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> very. And we also have Andy. Blastedies. Hello. <laughs> How are you, gents? You all right? Yeah, yeah, good, good. Um, yeah, I'm just I'm I'm I'm, I'm I always find the the subject we're about to tackle really funny. So I'm I'm knee deep in a load of websites. So if I just suddenly start laughing for no discernible reason, it's because I've just read another, another one. There's, there's a good chance we're all going to go to hell for laughing at something tonight's episode. I'm looking forward to it. Oh, yeah. I'm I'm looking for another reason to go to hell. <laughs> I'm always mean. looking for reasons to go to hell. Yeah, you know, um, I might as well if I'm going there. I might as well go there, kicking and screaming and skidding. If, 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 if you're going to go, go with a smile. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> go go there with, with a. A bent up car uh, with mm. smoke pouring out the front of it, and say, "Yeah, I have arrived. I'm ready for you." Yeah, yeah. I'm just on a big fiery speedboat, going, "Wah ha 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 ha! <laughs> Here I am." <laughs> okay, yeah. so uh, we have a new format. You probably heard it in the last episode that we've done. We are recording this about 15 minutes after the last episode, but you know, them's the breaks. So now. What we're doing or what we're trying out is 45 minutes of pure talking about the subject and we set the timer and then once the timer is uh, ringing, then that is it. No more. We finished the episode. That is it. It is done. It is in the history books. So that Mm. is what we're going to be doing. So chaps, are you ready to dive in on, is this called the Darwin Awards or are we doing the inventors or what? uh, The Darwin Awards. Just do the Darwin Awards and that covers everything, doesn't it? But you can explain yeah. where it all, we kick, kicked off from because okay. we came to this from bikes <laughs> well yeah that was christ that's my what? sorry that's my stupid bloody phone um yep. that came from a, a chat room thing i oh it was about the segway wasn't it yes we were talking about the segway and then it went on, on to inventors and then darwin awards from the uh, mixler chat which you can everyone can join in on at mixler dot com forward slash rogue two media you can join in and there's uh, plenty of people already listening there now so if you want to do that in future pop along join the facebook group and we'll let you know exactly what's happening there and then so Mm. without further ado i'm going to set 45 minutes onto my uh, timer without trying to make a horrible noise no not 48 minutes 40 why has it changed to 48 right are you gentlemen ready i'm 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 poised action i was born ready Good. Okay, right. Press in the start button and we're off. Okay, 45 minutes. Let's go. Go. Right. So, what's this? so gone? Are you going to tell the subject then? <laughs> so, Darwin Awards then, yeah? Um, yep. <laughs> yeah. The Dar- From my experience, the Darwin Awards are people killing themselves, actually killing themselves. I don't think you qualify mm. for the Darwin if you don't kill yourself, do you? No. no, it's no, it's you have to remove yourself from the gene pool, so you don't have to die. <laughs> you can remove your ability to reproduce and still be eligible. Oh, okay. But it 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 is it is either you kill yourself, yeah, or remove your ability to reproduce to spread your genes, if you will, um, and, and hence for Darwin Awards, usually in a humorous fashion. Yes. But as long as you don't get to pass on your stupidity to others is essentially the point. So you you essentially are helping evolution along by, <laughs> by natural selection. By helping <laughs> natural selection, exactly. You you have blown your cock off. Ergo, you can't have kids. Ergo, your stupidity at blowing your cock off has removed you from the gene pool. Well done. Really? I'm not sure if you're eligible if you've already had kids or not. I, I don't know. Oh, no, you're not. Well, no. They, yeah, so there you go. So no, you can't have had your, kids up until your, the point you've done. Yeah, your kids may have heard the story of when you did blow your knob off. And yeah. so that is it. It is passed on. So no. Yeah. That yeah, doesn't work. But it, um, yeah, the Darwin Awards kicked off in 1995. 
And oh, it came okay. from, you know, bulletin boards, chat bulletin boards well before the internet. Right. Yeah. You've come a bit for time. Yes, yes. Usernet. And that's when that's when they first came about. And the earliest post, now this this might be ironic, but the earliest post was um, on it was actually my birthday in 1985, <laughs> <laughs> which 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 may <laughs> which which may explain quite a few things if you believe in that kind of whole you know dates and da- dates and times thing. So um, yeah, that's 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 one of the, yeah. So my, so my birthday is actually the Darwin Awards birthday as well, which so I find quite amusing. Could you just explain bulletin boards? Because I think I know what you're about, but you know, just in case anyone else doesn't know. Well, it was user group user group news nets, which were basically where you you would get your computer and you would actually just dial up to another computer or to a server. Um, uh, that was usually something to do with a college, and essentially it was exactly what it was. It, it was a a pin board where you'd type something and you'd literally leave like two or three sentences, mm. and, and later as it evolved, you could leave bigger files and what have you on there, and then people would just reply to them. So so Reddit is a very similar sort of thing. So imagine Reddit but without the graphics, and with only a a ninety six hundred board modem, and right. Yeah, and like and, a war games modem. Yeah, proper, <laughs> proper beep, beep. I always wanted one of them telephone com- connect things where you put your telephone receiver into it. Not far off, not far off. Oh, it was, man. and it kind of evolved into news groups, which you used to get with, um, which you used to be able to access through Outlook Explorer. I don't know if you remember old Outlook Explorer, which was the kind of cut down version of Outlook. But that's 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 not part of the subject. Do we get this as extra time on the end? No, th- th- this is this is the time. He's distracting away. us, Lee. He's distracting yeah. us. Yes, he is. So <laughs> that's when you used to have to you you have to see whether you get onto news groups through ISPs and servers and news feeds and all that kind of stuff. Right. But okay. Before before websites, before websites were a thing. Excellent. So, yeah. Excellent. So mm. there's there's many instances of people removing themselves from the gene pool and i take it what we're going to do is just run through our favorites or the ones that we can find on the internet yes pretty pretty much (laughs) yeah pretty much i mean mean, probably the one that got cited the earliest is probably the one that's the least funny which is which is actually you know marie curie Um, yes yeah she's she's the person who you know who basically isolated radium you know the the chemical radium, which would later be used to sort of like you know treat cancers and all this sort of thing. Unfortunately, because she spent a large amount of time in the pro <laughs> unprotected in the in the um in the presence of radioactive materials, unsurprisingly, she died of radiation poisoning. Mm. <laughs> I don't think you, I don't. <laughs> it's like wow. There's you. There's that's a great start. You know, <laughs> I've invented something that actually killed me. <laughs> well, discovered was it invented or discovered? She dis- either, either, either way, it she, yeah, she died. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and in this in slightly earlier than that, in 1930, was a guy called Max Vela, and he was the guy who invented the liquid fueled rocket engine. Unfortunately, he discovered it by fueling his rocket engine with alcohol on his kitchen table and blew himself up. <laughs> <laughs> so so he is both the first person to invent a rocket and the first person to be killed by a rocket. There's a lot of firsts going on there. Yeah. Wow. I was gonna... So there you go. That's a winner. <laughs> what a genius. Yeah. So so I I've, I've got a good one here for you. Okay. Not, not perhaps not with the same level of gravitas or import as Lee's one, but it made no. me chuckle. Go on. So the year is 2008. A 46-year-old David Monk is on holiday in uh, Sal's Duluic in mm. Italy mm-hmm. uh, with a group of friends. They've had a few beers and they think, you know, you know what's going to be a really good idea? We should take some of those protective mats that are around the steel poles on the chairlifts and ski down the mountain on it like sled down a mountain <laughs> so they go and they tear off the bright high vis 
you know, warning, this is a big steel pole. Don't crash into this steel pole. But if you do, here's a soft thing for you to land into. They tear that off, mm. hike up the mountain, lay it down, and they go scooting off down the mountain, lying on this thing. Tons of fun, hurling down the mountain, and promptly slam straight into the same barrier they just taken the mountain from. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so he died on the spot, earning himself a Darwin Award. Uh, one of his friends later described him as a brilliant guy. Uh, I have to say, given the nature of his death, I have to question the use of the term brilliant. <laughs> mm, yeah. I like to think when people die and they join the Darwin Awards, there's a kind of silver coin just spinning next to them, like a Mario coin or a, a Sonic ring, just just waiting for someone else to pick it up and then pass it on to the Darwin Awards and mm. uh, introduce them to the Darwin Awards. It's, it's there ready to be collected. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, yeah. Have, have you got one, Elton? Or... No, I, I'm, I'm going to be searching for some now. I need to find okay. some. Well, in which case, allow me to uh, let's let's just throw this one out here because this is a, this is a good one. This is straight from the Darwin Awards itself from the DarwinAwards dot com. And um, in the 22nd of January, 2016. Uh, Clifford Ray Jones, 58, was um, driving without his pants and without a seatbelt and with a porno flick on his mobile GPS device. Um, And he had a wide open sunroof on a cold winter's Sunday. And unfortunately, he didn't keep his hands on the wheel because he was driving along at 3.40 in the morning and his Toyota went out of the control on the on the motorway rolled crashed and shot him through the roof <laughs> shot him through the sunroof while, <laughs> while he was having a wank in a car on a motorway <laughs> <laughs> i mean you know as as far as it goes I, that's that's a that's a that's a true winner you know it's it's <laughs> wow well turn left <laughs> <laughs> Turn left it. Oh fuck! <laughs> yeah, so he um he was on the vinegar strokes, lost control of his car, and he shot him through the sun. That's amazing. I, I, I've got a question. <laughs> yeah. Did, did did he come before he went? <laughs> I, 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 I think he was ejaculated through the sunroof. To be honest. <laughs> I okay. Going off of that, I have actually seen someone crash their car while watching a film on their. Stereo in the car as they're driving along. I've actually really? seen that. Yeah, I was coming back from a night call in New Cross, I think it was. Mm. I was going over Blackheath, and you know that there's as you drive past from uh, from New Cross over towards Greenwich, yeah, and you go past the tea hut, and you got that massive roundabout. Mm. We were heading that way towards the roundabout, and. Uh, we were following this car and we could see this big shining square mm. beacon in this car in front. Mm. And this guy was just, he wasn't erratic, but he, he was slowly weaving in between in his lane, but just slowly mm. going left and right, left and right. And he was coming up to the roundabout and mm. we saw that he wasn't slowing down for the roundabout. And mm. he promptly hit the roundabout full on, broke one of his alloys and then mounted the curb on the other side of the roundabout and parked up. And we thought, bloody hell, he's either had a heart attack or something's really gone wrong in there. Mm. And so we pull up, have a look at him and gone, are you all right, mate? And he's really dazed, really, really dazed. And we can see a film just, it wasn't a porno, but it, it was just a film playing on his stereo and he'd clearly been watching that and lost track of where he was and crashed his car and he'd screwed up two of his alloys and we looked at him and went yeah you're fucked aren't you and then fucked off (laughs) (laughs) didn't help him sorry there's no no way i'm gonna help an idiot like that no no he made his choice he's 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 off that's it yeah so even if he did have a spare wheel, he'd he'd probably still fucked up his tracking on his car anyway. But yeah, he had two broken alloys, so there was no way he was going to be able to explain that to anyone. No, nope. no, he's, he's no, that's that's fucking stupid, frankly. 
Shane, yeah, if he if he if he lost his lost his um lost his cock or um or basically died, he you would have actually been witness to a to a Darwin there. I would have actually seen. I would have been able to pick up the silver coin that is uh, flashing around yep. him. Yeah, that's it. You would have been able to. You would have been able to get it. Um, <laughs> I've, I've got another one here that I think is worth a, worth a word, which is um, that in April, the twenty fourth of April two thousand and fourteen in Kenya, got a double Darwin, where um, basically um, you have to run this one backwards. Right? Sorry, I'm reading <laughs> others. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I know. Once you start, you can't <laughs> stop. You have to run this one backwards. Basically, they local authorities found the two bodies plus a phone, yeah, in the desert, right? And what it turns out was by re- turning on the phone, opening the phone, unlocking it, what they found out was these two men had decided to go take a photo, a se- take a photo of themselves with a wild elephant. And basically, they'd taken a selfie, but instead of having one of these cameras where they could turn the, turn the you know, photo to themselves, they literally just turned the camera around and taken a photo. And the flash has startled the elephant, and the elephant has trampled them to death and buried them in the... In the <laughs> <head>. <laughs> but, it's all, but, but it's all captured on video. <laughs> So they've gone up to a wild elephant, literally held the camera out and gone, let's take the, let's just start this off. And then basically flashed the elephant and the elephants just squashed them and then buried them in the fucking sand. Oh, nice. No. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Uh, I've got one that's been suggested in the chat room from um, Alan Wilby. Yeah. Um, so in 1997, uh, the police in Reston, Virginia issued a statement saying they'd found the body of a 22 year old called Eric Barcia, who'd apparently died attempting a bungee jump off of a 70-foot bridge. Right. Uh, now, there was no commercial bungee operations here, so he took matters into his own hands. Mm. Uh, he tied several bungee cords together, knowing, and this is a true fact, no bungee cord has ever broken, ever. Mm. No, 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 no. So he strapped himself on securely, locked onto his ankles, tied onto the bridge, you know, really thing. Mm. Confident, knowing he had measured the bungee precisely, to mm. 70 foot and he jumped oh of Thank course you. on the way down uh, he, he did suddenly remember that bungee cord stretch mm. so recalculate, he recalculate. <laughs> abort abort uh, splat yeah start start pulling up the slack as you're dropping <laughs> <laughs> trying to bundle it up <laughs> oh what a genius <laughs> oh that's brilliant that's fucking great. It's like you imagine you imagine there's actually a moment somewhere in that drop where he suddenly twigs that. He's sort of like, hang on. There has to be, isn't no, there's, there? Yeah, there's there's a moment halfway down where he goes, Hold on, this is made of elastic. No <laughs> Thud. It's probably a millisecond after the point of no return where <laughs> gravity is just taking hold. Just, and it's I just, just... <gasps> Oh shit. I've just got vision of the elastic going going taut for about a millisecond and seeing it at the top and then just slowly going slack. Yeah. <laughs> right. I have. Go on. I'm, I'm on Snopes at the moment and I, I was wondering if I could go through some. Now, I'm not too sure whether these are correct. So I haven't had the chance to, to rifle through all the re- uh, read and writing that they have here. But yeah. I'm going to read them anyway because they might be real. They might not be real, but it tickled my fancy anyway. Anyway, a young Canadian man searching for ways to get drunk cheaply because he had no money with which to buy alcohol, mixed Mm. gasoline with milk. Not surprisingly, the concoction made him ill and he vomited into a fireplace in his house. The resulting explosion and fire burned his house down, killing both him and his sister. That's a little dark. I didn't realise how dark that went. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's fine. His troubles are over. We can mock him now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Maybe I should have just left the and his sister out at the end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that's probably a little bit on the dark side, but hey, you know. Um <laughs> But um yeah, on the dark side, 
we've got also got one uh, back in 2000. A teenager in Texas decided he was going to, you know, show off how clever he was by playing Russian roulette. And but he put one bullet in in the gun. Yeah. Mm. But unfortunately, it wasn't a revolver. He put it into a semi-automatic pistol. Oh, Jesus. Which means, <laughs> as a semi-automatic, anyone who knows, semi-automatic pistols, basically, as soon as the chamber's empty, it moves up to the next bullet. It moves it straight into the chamber. So, um, yeah, by putting it in a semi-automatic pistol and putting in one bullet, he rose his odds from one in six to exactly 100%. <laughs> 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 he was like, "Yeah, look at this. I'm going to try out the one in six <laughs> Yeah, what a knob. <laughs> That's the thing. You almost feel like you should be feeling sorry for these people, but you're actually like, "No, you're actually a colossal bell end. <laughs> you just, <laughs> you're just absolutely. Where do you start? I've got another one from the chat room here. Okay. Go on from Alan Carroll, yes. and, and this is an old one from 1912. Ooh. It's a story of uh, Franz Reicht, who was attempting to test his latest invention, a parachute jacket. Right. And he decided, you know, he, you know, this is going to be excellent publicity for his new invention. Everyone in Paris would see it. So he had like video cameras set up, you know, filming them. Mm. And he climbed to the top of the Eiffel Tower wearing his contraption. And if you look in the chat, there is a picture of him wearing this. It, it, mm. you, I can't imagine what was going to go wrong there. I think um, I've seen footage <laughs> of this. Uh yeah. So then he basically went to the edge. You know, I think he gave a rousing speech about how this was going to usher in a new age for mankind and promptly fell straight to his death. <laughs> <laughs> and we will soar with the birds. Yes. Yeah. We... Soar like eagles on yeah. pogo sticks. Yeah. Yeah. If, if only if only you'd done that a little bit more modern, you could imagine it sort of like, you know, having... And we're flying without wings. We're <laughs> sort of playing as he sails gracefully. When it's on you, have been framed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kaboom. I'm yeah. sure I've seen the footage of that. And it's it's a picture shot from his right hand it's, side. It's on, that, it's on the link. Oh, it's is on, it on the yeah, link? The, the, the video, if you click on the link, there's a picture and there's a video of him. Oh, okay. Right. Um, mm. Yeah, it's... It, it's it, it's a half hearted like, jump as it, well, isn't it? It looks it looks like he's wearing a mattress, basically. <laughs> he should have bounced then. Yeah. And and it's not so much a jump as in a you know, he just kinda of steps and almost trips. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and then there literally is a wily coyote. <laughs> it kinda of hits the ground and there's a little puff of smoke. <laughs> little bounce. It's, it's, like, it's like the it's like the Yeah, that's all. Yes, <laughs> exactly that. <laughs> and then a street sweeper just, just pushes him to the side. Yeah. Okay. Here's here's a good one. Well, actually, it's a bit dark, but we'll go with it. Um, here we go. Man dies after getting vibrator stuck up his ass. Excellent. Bloody hell. Yeah. We're back to, um, are you telling me porkies? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, apparently, um, a 50 year old man was taken to London Bridge Hospital after getting a sex toy lodged in his anus. anus. Unfortunately, doctors were not quick enough and the, <laughs> the device was still on. <laughs> but unfortunately, he died of septic shock. Oh, because... wow. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, what? Just always remember, keep a strip. Keep a piece of string on the end, girls. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> be safe out there. <laughs> always, always, have, always have a method of extraction planned beforehand. Don't you, can you imagine? He's just sort of like, he's going, <laughs> oh, that's getting quiet. <laughs> Where's that going? <laughs> oh, it's boring into me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, God, blimey. Hold on. It's wearing me appendix as a little hat. <laughs> <laughs> okay right i've got one here for you as well on. once again oh. it's from snopes so it may not be true but sod it let's mm. go with it Over. okay there's a, a guy called everett sanchez mm. and he's had a bet with uh two of his mates there at a golf range mm. and he's tried to wash his balls in a mm. ball washer at the local golf course 
Proving nice. once again that beer and testosterone are a bad mix, Sanchez manages to straddle the ball washer and dangle his stro- scrotum in the machine. Hang Much- about, hang about. Wasn't this on an episode of Black Dog once? No, that was me putting my balls in the in the in a air blade. Oh, okay. <laughs> I survived and I had kids, so I don't qualify. I uh, just 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 wanted to clarify that. <laughs> it's worth noting. <laughs> I mean, it's a, it's a fair point. <laughs> well made. <laughs> anyway, uh, much to his dismay, I'm sure Lee had the same dismay. One of his buddies uh, upped the ante by spinning the crank on the machine with Sanchez's scrotum in place, thus wedging them solidly in the mechanism. Sanchez, who immediately passed his p- threshold of pain, collapsed and tumbled from his from his perch unfortunately for sanchez the height of the ball washer was more than the more than the foot higher off the ground than his testicles are in a normal stance (laughs) and the scrotum was the weakest link sanchez's scrotum was ripped open during the fall and one of his testicles was plucked from him forever and remained in the ball washer (laughs) Do you think it's still there today? Is like a memorial thing. I hope yeah. so. <laughs> um, luck- luckily, though, someone scored a par four with it. So it's- <laughs> <laughs> to add insult to injury, Sanchez broke the uh, a new three hundred pound driver that he had just purchased <laughs> from the pro shop and was using to balance himself. Sanchez was rushed to the nearest hospital for surgery, and the remaining three. Uh, it, uh, the remaining threesome were asked to leave the course. No shit. Yeah, you're not uh, coming back here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Their their membership was revoked. I mean, it is interesting because I'm I'm looking at a lot of these, and it's quite interesting to note that like it's all guys, <laughs> and normally it's all guys doing something really horrible to their genitalia. I mean, apart from the idiot who shot himself with a semi auto mag, thinking he's going to have like six empty shots first, but you know, well, no, that... I've got well, I've got one. It doesn't involve genitalia, but it involves men being stupid. Well, a man. Yeah, go on. Uh, then. Basically, um, there's a guy. He's uh, out jet skiing. His name's Rodney, which kind of tells you everything you need to know about it right there. Yeah. But he's doing laps around Lake Washington in his jet ski, and he realizes his battery's running a bit low. So, mm. you know, he pulls up alongside the shore, moors up. Runs out, runs to his car, grabs a couple of jumper cables, thinking I'm just going to, you know, put a bit of juice in the thing. Runs back towards the uh, water's edge, uh, but he doesn't stop at the edge. He jumps straight in, holding the jumper cables. Oh, Jesus. His body was apparently found floating under the dock later that evening. Nice. Nice. Well, that's... (laughs) I don't know what you can really say about that one. I, I, I think the only thing any of us can really say is uh, it was positively shocking. Oh, oh Jesus. Well, you weren't going to go there. <laughs> no, no, I'm not even going to trigger the bloody yeah soundtrack. <laughs> but it, mm. is it surprising that most of these are either by, done by drunk people and mostly men as well? No, no, not even the slightest. Because mm, men no. are idiots, aren't they? Yes. Mm. Yeah, they are. I mean, you know, it's, it's it's quite obvious from from a lot of our own exploits that we don't think of these things until afterwards to go. Oh, actually, that's pretty fucking stupid. We shouldn't have done that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm looking at one now. Like, get this one. This one seems like on the on the surface of it seemed like obviously a good idea because there's a man, yeah, who wanted to save some money on gunpowder for his shotgun. And he realized that inside a grenade that he already had, he could actually get the gunpowder out if he could just crack the grenade open. Now, that seems stupid enough as it is. But then it turns out that he didn't want it really for his shotgun. What he wanted it for, as his family revealed, was to make his own fireworks. So you start thinking, well, hold on. Let's just, just before we go to where it ends up, you could firstly... He's got a grenade. Secondly, he lied about making his own fireworks. He just wanted to actually... He, he tried to balls it out by saying, no, actually, I'm trying to be saving money on my shotgun shells. Right? So that's weird enough. But the next bit is the best bit. 
to open the grenade, guess what he used? <laughs> take take a rough guess. Go on, I'll I'll leave it. I'll leave it. I'll leave it open. I, I, I'm I'm guessing some sort of uh, electric saw, perhaps. Not far off. Um, anyone hammer in the... and chisel? Anyone in the hammer and chisel? We've got hammer and chisel. We've got an electric saw. Anyone in the chat room want to take a guess? Uh, Lucky Minty saying a hammer. Uh, anyone else? No? Oh, uh, well. Okay, no one else in the chat room. So basically, he used a chainsaw. <laughs> okay. Right? And the problem is... It actually uh, springs to mind when you want to open a grenade. Well, exactly. He decided to use a chainsaw to crack the grenade open. And as soon as his chainsaw touched the surface of the grenade, guess what happened? Sparks started flying. Ergo, the grenade immediately detonated and blew him apart. And and apparently the first thing the family knew was when the chainsaw came down in the garden. (laughs) 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 who's <laughs> <laughs> left that chainsaw there thud it <laughs> what I, is that I, I, sh- I hope it came down and just <laughs> the blade <laughs> went into the ground and went do yo 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 I mean that's the thing it's like <clears throat> there's so much wrong with that story you don't even know where to begin but the fact is that they didn't even realise he was dead they just <laughs> there was a chainsaw in the garden <laughs> where'd that come from <laughs> I'd almost like to think that the night before it landed someone said have you seen your father <laughs> <laughs> followed by a shoe and probably some <laughs> fluttering bits of like t-shirt or something <laughs> maybe a hat <laughs> the smell of smoke coming from just over the way Ah, uh, I've just found some beautiful ones. Mm. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> an Iraqi terrorist mm. decided to send out a letter bomb. Yeah. Uh, but not being the brightest of sparks, he didn't put enough postage stamps on it. <laughs> so, uh, it was returned to sender. Oh, brilliant. And, uh, didn't recognise the letter and opened it himself. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh, and I've got another one. I, I, I'll do this one here. Uh, an Australian Kung Fu master. It had to be an Australian. Um, uh, thought that his class was good enough that he could take on a lion. Mm. Um, and one of his students uh, decided to take uh, him literally and went to the local zoo, broke into a lion enclosure um, mm. a- and uh, in- instigated an altercation with a lion. Right. Well, well it, we're talking about the Darwin Award, so I think you yeah. can guess how this went ended up. I was going to say, him, yeah, man versus lion, lion wins. Yes. I think that's basically it, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, when you say it like that, it's not quite as impressive, but, you know. <laughs> I bet you thought he was doing well, though. I thought he was going to... I, I bet you thought he was going to sue the bloke for, you know, saying, oh, the, the lion, like, mauled me, so I want my money back. It's like, nope. Yeah. Yeah. Nope, <laughs> there, I don't know if you guys follow on Twitter. Um, it's called At Awards Darwin. I've been following it for quite some time now. Right, and they post lots and lots of videos. The the people don't kill themselves; it's just stupid people doing stupid stuff. And you know, mm. you could have made it onto the Darwin Awards, but there's mm. lots of stuff on there that's well worth. It's like the JCB bringing down the chimney on itself. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> yeah, they nice. do have one on there. We've all heard of kids and round uh, mini roundabouts. The stuff that you find in play. Uh, grounds yeah where well, they get a moped and then yeah ramp it up yeah there's lots of them type of yeah incidences <laughs> there yeah yeah there's loads of those i mean there's the 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 classic the classic car one and it's the one that i think is probably the first darwin i ever heard i think it's probably been just dis- i think it's been um kind of probably uh snopes by now i imagine but um, is the one about the highway patrol who found who were mis? Yeah, I'll, I'll just read it out from the Darwin Awards. Actually, Hi- Arizona Highway Patrol were mystified when they came upon a pile of smouldering wreckage embedded in the side of a cliff, rising above a road on the apex of a curve. 
with metal debris resembling the site of an airplane crash. However, it turned out to be the, the remains of a vaporized automobile. Um, the make of the vehicle was unidentified at the scene. Eventually, the forensics figured out what it was and pieced together the events leading up to the demise. It seems that a former Air Force sergeant had managed to get hold of a JATO, a jet-assisted takeoff unit, which they used to fire planes off of um, aircraft hangers, uh, air, aircraft carriers. carriers. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, JATO units are solid fuel rockets used to give heavy military air- airplanes an extra push for takeoff. Um, on the dry desert lake bed, um, uh, the location of choice for breaking ground speed w- records, this sergeant took the JATO unit into the Arizona desert, found a long stretch of road, he attached it to his car, jumped in, and then fired off the rocket. The facts as best could be determined are as follows. The operator was driving a 1967 Chevy Impala, um, right? He ignited the JATO unit approximately 3.9 miles from the crash site. It was soon established by the location and proximity of a scorched, melted strip of asphalt. The vehicle quickly reached a speed of 300 miles an hour and continued at that speed under full power for 25 seconds. <laughs> The soon-to-be pilot experienced G-forces in the Chevy Impala, usually reserved for dogfighting F-14 jocks under full afterburners. The Chevy remained on a straight highway for approximately 2.6 miles before the driver tried to apply the brakes, (laughs) completely melting them, blowing the tyres, and after leaving thick rubber marks on the road surface, the vehicle became airborne for an additional 1.3 miles before exploding 125 feet up a cliff. <laughs> uh, Genius! That was that was the very first thing they did on Mythbusters as well. When yeah. we tried to do it, they could never get the thing to work. <laughs> yeah, I haven't seen that on Mythbusters. It it, it was the first myth they did. Was oh. that one? Hmm. Yeah, but ah, oh, it's so funny. That's brilliant. Yeah. Just, just the thought of this. Just it's got the me. ingenuity that goes into some of these, which I love. It's, mm. it's, it's not something simple. It's not. He, he had a, he had a vision. He had a dream, and by Jingo, he was going to have achieve it. Yes, exactly. I mean, it's, I suppose the question is, how, how do you think if you were going to try something like this? You know, some some sort of Darwin Award thing. How do you think you would go? What would you be doing that oh. you think is eminently sensible that's going to end up killing you? Oh wow! I might suggest to you you give Mass Effect Andromeda another go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. You wouldn't last very long for that, especially if you came around my house and gave it to me for my birthday or something. I'm just that yes, would, that would work. Um, so I I don't know how I would personally go mm. but i would be slightly disappointed if after i had i had passed there mm. wasn't a joke or someone didn't take the piss out of the way i had died mm. but i don't think i'm hoping I, I don't join the darwin awards but there's been plenty of times where you, you sit there and go that was <laughs> close wasn't it yeah yeah i mean i can imagine i mean i imagine if i if if something happened to me, it would probably be just a, a sheer level of clumsiness that was mind boggling. I mean, I've done enough stuff where I've tr- I've thinking, oh, you know what? I'd be I I can do this, mm. you know. And like the last one I think was the was the dishwasher when I tried to repair the dishwasher and then forgot that a the taps were on and b that the that I I left the sort of sort of screwdriver in the switch so that I could see the, so that so I could leave the so I could leave the door open and have the machine running so I could see what it looked like you know, so I could see where not spray. and there's a picture of me with you know I think on Facebook with water all over the floor and water all over my face yeah. because unsurprisingly what I completely forgot was that the the sort of the the blades on the dishwasher don't just go round they go round spraying water everywhere yeah. And sure enough, you know, trying to jerry rig a dishwasher so that it ran with the door open leads to guess what? Water everywhere. So I suspect that something like that will be my undoing. I suspect I might just be found dead under a, a washing machine or 
possibly changing a plug on a kettle or something. Mm. And, and of course, if this does happen, we must all remember uh, Lee, Lee's wishes for his remains to be scattered over Disneyland without commission. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, drop, <laughs> just just leave my parts. Just throw my just throw my my limbs through through the Magic Kingdom door. That <laughs> that'll be fine. <laughs> so that I, I I can keep everyone happy, keep their smiling faces. Would you like a dark one? Go on, him. Oh, go on. <laughs> Okay, this is from February 1998, and it's during a heated marital dispute. A 25-year-old man picked up his 20-year-old wife and threw her off the eighth-floor apartment balcony. Mm. To his dismay, she became tangled in power lines below. He immediately leapt from the balcony and fell towards his wife. We can only speculate... As to the, his reasons, he, was he angry trying to finish the job, or was he remorseful and hoping to rescue her? He did not accomplish either goal. He missed the power lines completely and plunged to his death. <laughs> and she's still there now. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, she's still hanging there. Just, she, she'll be fine for a while. Just, 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 just leave her up there. She, she'll be back. <laughs> someone, someone will be along any minute now. Someone, will, someone will come and get me. <laughs> oh dear. Um. Right. Okay. I tell you what. Then give me give me a year between 1995 and 2017, and I'll pick I'll pick a Darwin from one of those years. Because I've got because I've got so many of them. I don't know what one to pick. Uh, 2001. 2001. Good choice. Let's go over to there. So, um, how about about, oh, this one's got a lot of votes. So let's try this one. Um, uh, well, in March of 2001, in Delaware, two toll collectors on a motorway were involved in a friendly snowball fight. When one reached out to scoop some snow from a passing tractor trailer rig, manning a toll booth is not the most interesting job, so it's only natural that the collectors would, the collectors would engage in some freestyle entertainment. But scooping the snow from a moving vehicle is not the safest of sports, and the toll collector's hand caught the rig, and he was pulled from his booth and dragged to his death. So as the tractor has gone through the toll booth, and the guy's paid his money, the toll booth guys tried to grab some snow off the top of the top of the truck going <laughs> past, and then basically snagged himself and pulled himself out of the toll booth and got dragged up the road. Oh, man. <laughs> That's Ugh. that's just bizarre. So yeah, so there you go. Don't don't do that. Don't try and take snow off the roof of a, anything. Wow, which, which is moving because that's just stupid. <laughs> Did anyone see the video? I think it was on the news recently of the guy who decided not to use the bridge to go over the railway tracks, instead mm. run across the railway tracks. He didn't get caught, but he was, I'll tell you what, he was so close. Yeah? I think no, it was not... this week. Oh, no, no, I haven't seen that. Have you seen the one of, uh, it, I think it's a Chinese mall, and there's an elevator has just closed, and there's a mm-hmm. gentleman in one of those little uh, mobility scooters. Yeah. yeah. And he just starts ramming the doors of the elevator. Yeah. And then he rams through the doors of the elevator. But the elevator is no longer there, for he has moved on on his journey and kind <laughs> yeah. of went tumbling down. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I, yeah, he turned it into a cat flap, didn't he? And ended up, yeah, he, he tumbled yeah. on top of the car and died from his injuries on top of there. That, there's a lot, I see a lot of these things. Not for want of me going and hunting for them, but because I'm a people member send of, them to you. <laughs> yeah, they do. Because oh, look at this idiot! It's, it, it scares the shit out of me. Uh, frankly, it's it's something that I don't really want to see because it worries me, and mm. so don't want to be any part of that. And yeah, man, some of them are, are, are frightful. Really are. There's there's one where someone's hoovering in a lift mm. <laughs> but the plug is on the outside uh, <laughs> <in hell. laughs> 
Nice. And yeah, you know, it causes loads of problems. And some idiot talking in the lift and their dog is outside the lift and then all of a sudden the door's closed and you see the dog raise up on the on the doors. Yeah. Mm. Scary stuff. Oh. So yeah, I I try and stay away from stuff that's related to my job. <laughs> 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 um uh, okay uh here's one here's one to lighten the mood a little bit um a 16th 16th century chinese official here we go right so this is this is probably the oldest one we got called wan hu h-u so i probably pronounced <laughs> that wrong yeah uh not doctor who or any of that sort of thing but um he was said to have attempted to launch himself into outer space using 47 Firework rockets. <laughs> <laughs> Unsurprisingly, the rockets did not lift off. They just sat there and exploded. And the, the report ends with, and it is said that neither he nor the chair that he was sat on were ever seen again. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> did he forget that fireworks explode at the end? <laughs> don't know. <laughs> I don't know what his plan was once he got off the ground. I mean, let's be honest. He's he's going to go up really high if he managed to succeed, and somehow he was going to a 16th century official tried to launch himself into space. What was he going to find up there? Well, that's the well, thing. That's though. what he wanted to find out. It was the sense of exploration. <laughs> yeah, as he went flying into deep space on the back of a bunch of fireworks. Oh no, don't worry. He was never going to get into space. And he well, plugged well, his mic <laughs> back in. Yeah, plug your mic back. In. You've gone gone all echoey. Have I got all echoey? Is that better? No. Nope. nope. It's terrible. I think I've broken my microphone. Oh dear. <laughs> yeah. And it was at that point he killed himself by trying to plug in his microphone with his feet stuck in a bottle of water. Way that, that guy bottle. with the, the rockets. Yeah. At what point do you reckon he thought, okay, he's up let's imagine that he got up in the air. At yeah. what point does he think Ah, what goes up must come down? Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's like, clearly the plan isn't thought all the way through. Mm. It's it, That's what I'm saying. It's it's that whole thing. It's the same as me with the dishwasher door open. It's that, that whole thing of like, yeah, this started off with, I'll sort the problem out once the problem started to happen because I can sort it out. Unfortunately, not working out that by that point, it's probably too late because I don't know. I just don't know what he thought would was ha- going to happen. Even if he got like, a thousand feet up into the air, how would he have got back down without without dying? Yeah. This this is the sixteenth century though. So well, Yeah. I'm not saying they were stupider back then. I I'm just saying that that we now know strapping fireworks is a bad idea because of the sacrifice of great men like him. <laughs> yeah, they were discovering really, weren't they? They they, they were the cutting edge man. They they were they were pushing the frontier. Yeah, they hadn't done it. They were the Beatles of their era. I'd have gone more with the Neil Armstrongs, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hold on. Um, oh, hold on. Um, no, I'll, I'll leave that one. Oh, ah, you, dude, you can't uh, juicy dangle uh, it like that. Uh, well, it was, it was yet another. Saf- <laughs> this is in 2001, January in Tanzania. Um, a safari tourist met with an early demise when she let the safety of the tour. She left the safety of the tour bus in order to frame a better picture. The, Oh, there you go. The woman, a volunteer with the U.S. Peace Corps, and her camera were fatally trampled by an enraged elephant. Yeah, so there you go. Elephants again. Elephants again. Oh, uh, we're getting a jingle. We're getting a jingle. <laughs> yes, we have the jingle. I'll let you do that one. But uh... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Don't worry. <laughs> Don't worry. It, the jingle kind of dropped out, reappeared, and went... <laughs> So kind of, <laughs> I figured I figured I was being given a reprieve. The, that was the extra time when we started talking about usernets. There you go. There you go. Yeah, I'm still learning about this new system. Still learning. Yeah. Always learning. Always yeah. be learning. So, so that was the Darwin Awards then. And people that have killed themselves willy nilly. Idiots. Yeah. Yeah. Can't go wrong with people trying to kill themselves willy nilly. No, no, exactly. Well, there, there's. T- I, I, I think it's not just killing themselves; it's it's losing the willy part, too. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even get to the one where the man cut off his circulation trying to screw a garden bench. <laughs> oh Jesus! Oh man, I had so many. 
I know, there's, I know, no. but you know, forty-five minutes is is the law now. I'm afraid. Well, keeps you, you keeps people wanting and keeps you wanting to do this again, and again. So that that's good. Yep. Uh, the site that I was on and you guys were pointing me towards was DarwinAwards.com. So there's tons and tons of stuff on there. It sounds like they update it quite regularly, and I'm I'm assuming as we go through the years, it'll be updated quicker and quicker as people find out new ways of entering themselves onto this list yeah i'm surprised i'm surprised they don't just have a link to itv's you've been framed page oh jesus that's yeah <laughs> but there you go yeah anyway so well there there we go the darwin awards has been covered so next time out i'll try and get bikes done we'll, we'll definitely try and get bikes done lee you up for doing bikes yeah, i'll do bikes i'll yeah. do bikes Alan Andy, will... you, you up for doing bikes at some point? I, I, I can do bikes which have engines in them. Ah, that's uh, not, not really the same thing, you see. Nah. Uh, see, see I, 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 Again, I, I, I kind of miss the whole grifters and choppers and that scene. Excuse me. Excuse me. Uh, excuse me. Point of order here. I, I'm, not having, I'm not having this taken out of my 45 minutes next time. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know how this format works. I've just got to cut that off at the bars. <laughs> <laughs> how does this how does this format work does it does it time roll over no 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 it doesn't roll over no it, it's once i press it that that's it it doesn't stop until yeah. it stops. So, and it's, it's only when you press the button you're fine up until then oh well there you go well let's talk about my bike <laughs> <laughs> can, 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 can you please just get the queen music for the intro or whatever you're doing if of a jingle for the time up jingle oh what the bicycle yeah freddie mercury sing bicycle uh, that's your jingle next time Okay, I'll try and get that for it. Yeah, get get the clearance on it, Elton. You know, it'd only be a couple of thousand quid for 30 seconds. Yeah, I'll just <laughs> pop down to the Mercury estate and get it all sorted out. Don't worry. Ah, just, don't bother with that. Just go and see Brian May, you know, just say, like, what was it, 50p? <laughs> Brian yeah, he... May, I guarantee you it'll take me longer to walk up his driveway than the actual <laughs> 45 minutes that we are given to to do one of these episodes now. Flip it now. Yeah. Yeah, and you wouldn't want to go there because there'd be like Anita Dobson's "Anyone Can Fall in Love" on constant loop, <laughs> playing playing through the stereo. You imagine now, that be on one side of the wing of the the house, and uh, yeah. driven by you be on the other side of the wing. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then sitting in the toilet in the toilet playing on the music system there is "Who Wants to Live Forever." <laughs> 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 oh. okay so format kind of works we're still trying to work out the the kinks in this but yeah we're, we're getting there we shall i think i'm i'm going to carry on with this and see how we go next time out i think it works perfectly yeah. it works really well yeah okay yeah. good good okay. you've got the ad, you've also got the ad attention of when will the buzzer go off you know yeah. Ex- yeah exactly yeah it gets very exciting towards the end i could feel it, it. does yeah, you need the countdown sort of. Oh no, no, you don't need any count. Oh, maybe do you do need a countdown? Yeah, yeah, you need you need you need mother from Alien. T minus ten seconds. Five, four. I, I have that if you want it as well. <laughs> if it's in an app form, then yes, please, I'll have that definitely. Oh, I've got it as an MP3. I can send to you. Oh, that do that do. Yep. This is all fascinating for the listeners. Yes. Anyway, oh, okay, sorry. right. We, we should go. Uh, let's do some plug-in. Lee, where can everyone find you on the internet? Um, they can find me on Instagram, uh, Cartoon Beardy. You can find us on um, Twitter, well, uh, which is at Black Dog Podcast. And the Black Dog Podcast itself can be found at blackdogpodcast.com and on iTunes. Excellent. And Andy, where can they find you on the internet? Oh, on the internet, uh, you can find me on Twitter at, at Andy3E, and Instagram is at AndyP3E. And you can find me on the Grand Prix podcast and the Band of Brothers podcast, which, if my maths is correct, there's now one episode of each left by the time this comes out. That should be correct, yes. Yes. Yeah. All about unless, unless, of course, the schedule has changed, in which case that is not the case. <laughs> Yeah, possibly. Yes, so that would be null and void. <laughs> what about Lovely. the um, the cosplaying stuff that you do as well? 
Oh yeah, yeah. You know, all, 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 because playing stuff, yeah, and obviously uh, with uh, Mr. McManus's uh, help there, you can find. I actually tried to change the name of my page, but Facebook wouldn't let me. But if you search for it, seemed like a good idea at the time because it did. Mm. I'm on my own Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> Ironic that you want to change that name. <laughs> I want, I want to change it, and they won't let me. They, but, they won't. They, they tell me. They, they, I wanted to change it to Hood Cosplay and, and Projects, right? And they told me I couldn't because it would be too... Um, people who've already liked the page wouldn't know what it was about. And I'm there saying, that's literally what the page is about. I'm. It's like me having a page about fish and chips and wanting to call the page fish and chips. And them saying, no, people will be confused about what the page is about. Mm. <laughs> Alas... It seemed like a good idea at the time, though. It did. I stand by that. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, you can catch me on the podcast already mentioned, Black Dog Podcast, the Grand Prix Podcast, and Band of Brothers Podcast as well. You can also catch Shonky Lab on the Facebook, which is facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Shonky Lab. We're on iTunes. We're on all the other places that you can pick up podcasts. Reviews are always welcome for all of them. Uh, episodes e- either for the black dog or for hypnogoria or for all the other stuff that we do as well so you know spread the love around a little bit so until next time we'll probably do bikes next time out so fingers crossed so yeah. so thank you guys for joining me for this it's been excellent yep it's been good fun thank you always a pleasure sir excellent and it just leaves me to say please leave quietly this is a residential area <laughs> Thank you.